What makes a car more powerful, faster, and at the same time more economical and environmentally friendly? If you think it's just the engine, it's not entirely true. To get speed and power, the best solution isn't necessarily to cram a larger engine under the hood. An alternative is to add a turbocharger. But did you know that in addition to turbocharging, an internal combustion engine can also be supercharged? What's a supercharger and how is it different from a turbocharger? We'll find out today. First, let's do a quick rundown on turbochargers. You might assume a turbocharger is huge and heavy, but actually it's quite small. When it comes to turbochargers, there are two main components, the turbine and the compressor. A turbine is a small impeller, which is a wheel or rotor, that rotates due to the engine exhaust gases. The impeller is connected to the compressor by one shaft. The compressor is also an impeller, but its purpose is to capture and compress the air with its blades. When the engine exhaust rotates the turbine blades, the compressor impeller blades also automatically rotate since they're on the same axis. Outside air is pulled in by the compressor impeller towards the engine cylinders for combustion. A very powerful explosion occurs in the combustion chamber, making the piston turn the crankshaft with greater force. And that's how even a small engine can have high power. In ordinary cars, a turbo can increase the engine's power by 20 to 25 percent and acceleration by two times. In addition to increasing the power, turbocharging allows you to economically use fuel and reduce the toxicity of the exhaust due to the fuel being completely burned in the process. But there's one drawback, turbo lag. When you press the accelerator pedal to pass another car, you need to accelerate quickly, but it might not happen instantaneously. But why does this happen? For the piston to start working with greater force and produce more acceleration, a more powerful explosion needs to occur in the cylinder. This can happen if the fuel-air mixture is enriched with cold compressed air, which gets pumped by the compressor. Since the compressor is fixed on the same shaft as the turbine, the turbine must first rotate faster. When you press the pedal to the floor, more fuel enters the chamber, but the level of saturation of the fuel-air mixture doesn't increase. So the fuel in the cylinder will not burn out completely, which means you don't get the power and acceleration you expected. Also, it takes time for the fuel to reach the required volume in the combustion chamber, burnout, and for exhaust gases to rotate the turbine at the needed speed. So this delay in response to wide open throttle is called turbo lag. One way to address this issue is to install two turbochargers of different sizes. The larger one runs at higher RPMs, while the smaller one operates at lower RPMs. The reason for this setup is because a small turbine by itself can spin faster, but at higher RPMs, it can't effectively handle the volume of compressed air. That's why you have the larger turbo. The result is smooth acceleration dynamics without turbo lag. This is a type of bi-turbo or twin turbo setup called sequential turbocharging. It's designed to give your engine the needed boost to deliver faster acceleration and avoid turbo lag. For a more detailed explanation, check out my video on turbochargers. But there's an alternative to turbochargers, and that's the supercharger. A supercharger doesn't have a turbine, and it's not driven by the car's own exhaust gases. Instead, it's mechanically driven by belts that are driven by the engine. You have an air pump directly connected to the engine crankshaft by a belt or chain. It always turns and responds immediately to throttle, so you can immediately feel the engine's response when you press the gas. There's practically no delay, and power comes immediately. That's because the air compressor instantly receives the same RPM as the car's crankshaft at any moment. The the more you press the gas, the faster the compressor spins. That's one of the key advantages of superchargers over turbos. Let's talk about three main types of superchargers, roots, twin screw, and centrifugal. The main difference between these types is how they move air to the intake manifold. Roots and twin screw superchargers draw air in by the use of different types of meshing lobes, where the centrifugal supercharger uses an impeller. All three types give your car a boost, but they differ in size and efficiency. Let's dive in and take a look at each. The Roots Supercharger is the oldest design. It's named after Francis and Philander Roots. Back in 1860 in Indiana, the Roots brothers founded the Root Blower Company. They patented the Root Blower, which was an air pump used in blast furnaces to blow compressed air to melt iron and for other industrial applications. 
Pretty much, the Root Supercharger has an oval shaped body and two rotors that rotate in opposite directions, in a cross section similar to the rotors in an airplane engine. The rotors are mounted on an axle and are located one above the other. When one rotator rotates to the right, the other rotates to the left. As a result, the air is compressed, not inside the compressor, but in the intake manifold. That's why they're sometimes referred to as external compressors. This method allows more fuel to be injected into the combustion chamber and generate more power as the mixture gets enriched with more oxygen. Root superchargers are popular in muscle cars and hot rods. You can see the part of the supercharger sticking out of the hood because the superchargers sit on top of the engine. But they're the least efficient of the superchargers. One reason is because they're large and add weight to the car. Also, they move air in discrete bursts rather than a continuous smooth flow. The twin screw supercharger, like Lysome, for the first time, a patent for a screw type compressor was received by Henrik Rieger from Germany on March 24, 1878. Unfortunately, the lack of technology at that time did not allow Heinrich to achieve mass production of the screw compressor. But almost half a century later, in 1935, Alf Liesholm, who worked for Lungstrom's Ank Turbine AB, later known as Svenska Rotor Maskiner AB or SRM, in 1951, patented a design with rotor wrapping around each other. This kind of supercharger is similar to an auger or corkscrew drill in a traditional meat grinder, like the one grandma used. However, in this supercharger, two augers or corkscrews work together simultaneously. Instead of compressing air in the intake manifold, the twin screw supercharger compresses the air inside the body itself. The rotors capture the incoming air and, be and begin a mutual counter rotation. Then the air is pushed forward like meat in a meat grinder. The twin screw supercharger is more efficient than the root superchargers, but it's harder and more costly to make, and therefore more expensive to buy. The reason is because the rotors have extremely small clearance between each other, so it requires a higher degree of precision to manufacture correctly. That's one of the main drawbacks and also why we don't see as many of the twin screw superchargers in many mass-produced vehicles. They also make more noise, so you need noise suppression techniques. The centrifugal supercharger powers an impeller at high speeds, often more than 50,000 RPMs, to quickly draw air into the compressor. It's kind of like what the fan in your bathroom does when you take a hot, steamy shower. It provides ventilation for the steam to blow out of the room. Centrifugal superchargers are the most efficient of the three types. They're also small, lightweight, and attached to the front of the engine rather than the top. That's why it's the most common of all forced induction systems. The main difference between superchargers and turbochargers is that superchargers have smoother acceleration, better power dynamics, and no turbo lag. But the main disadvantage is that they're fuel hungry. That's the tipping scale today. The average person is more interested in fuel economy than just power alone. Federal requirements for ever improving fuel efficiency, stringent greenhouse gas emission standards, and customers' desire for fuel economy are moving automakers to prefer turbos over superchargers. For example, the global information company IHS Market found that 220 car models offered a turbocharged engine in 2018 compared to just 30 models with a supercharged engine. Many consumers prefer the lesser of the two evils. They'd rather put up with turbo lag and lack of immediate acceleration rather than spending more gas money on supercharged engine. Besides, turbochargers are more efficient than superchargers since your engine doesn't need to work harder to power the turbo. Since it capitalizes on the in quote marks, free energy that would otherwise be lost in the exhaust. But some car makers like Volvo, for example, decided not to choose between the two technologies. Instead, they're opting to use both a turbo and a supercharger in new models. For example, the new Drive E engines in their S90 and XC60 models. Some Volvos use a small supercharger to boost power, and the turbo takes over after it spools up. You can see how it's called twin charging. A recent alternative to increasing power involves using an electric supercharged engine that works in conjunction with the turbocharger. In electric supercharging, the compressor rotates with the help of a small electric motor. 
and it is located between the turbine and the compressor. This small but powerful electric motor is powered by a 48 volt power grid and is capable of spinning up to 170,000 RPMs. It operates almost instantly when you press the gas pedal without waiting for the flow of exhaust gases to accelerate the turbine wheel. To spin the impeller up to working 65 to 70,000 rotations per minute, the electric motor needs only 250 milliseconds when you no longer need the electric superchargers it turns off, in contrast to the continuous operation of the turbine. So the electric motor compensates for turbo lag. The world of cars does not stand still. Engineering technology is progressive and never ending. Although turbos are winning now, this doesn't mean the age of the supercharger is over. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel for more technology and history videos. Thank you.